Have you guys noticed all the movies coming out that are based on products? I mean, because there's kind of a lot of them. And I just want to talk about it and, you know, share my thoughts, see what your thoughts are. And yeah. So, I mean, the most prevalent one is the Barbie movie, right? That came out recently, which is very cool, right? We're not here to hate on the Barbie movie at all or anything about it. It was undeniably a really good feminist, iconic movie. You know, whatever you want to call it. I literally saw it on premiere day with my girlfriend, and I, I loved it. Like, even if she wasn't there, and I was a single dude, I probably would have saw it. And that's not cap. I really mean that. <laughs> I mean, we all remember the speech. It was a really good movie. And, oh, one of my lights died. <laughs> and it just had so many iconic moments. But, let's just step back and get our goggles. Take our feminist goggles off. Take our social goggles off for a second. And just look at this point blank. That it's a movie talking about women's stereotypes because a product has been around for years that promotes bad women's stereotypes, right? And because of that, this company that makes that product is in on this movie making jokes about itself. In turn, making it an iconic movement, which is very cool, right? It's cool that they're aware about it and that they're involved in trying to do something. But let's just not talk about how Barbie sales were not really spiked. Like the years before, they really weren't going into like extreme growth super much. But when the Barbie movie came out, Mattel said that just because of the movie, they estimated that their sales went up around $125 million. That's crazy. They said their doll category as a whole went up 24% in sales, with 14% of that being specifically Barbie dolls. Like, that's insane when you think about it. And yes, while it did do a good thing for this, it still, like, I don't know. It still made the company lots of money, right? And there's no way they didn't know that was going to happen. Another thing is, while we love Greta Gerwig and Margot Robbie... And uh, Ryan Gosling and everybody that was in that movie. Let's just say that she's even come out and said that Mattel has talked to her a few times about stuff she wanted to do in the movie. And Mattel is a huge company. So while yes, they were aware of the problems that they had created for society, specifically women. Let's just not forget that if there was anything they did not want in that movie, they could have not put it in there for sure. They have that power for sure. Like, they had to give them the rights. Like, if if not, they just would have been like, adios, right? Yeah, even if the contract was already signed, it's like, it's just one of those things that they show in movies. It's like, you're really going to beat Mattel in court? No, probably not. And I'm not saying that's cool if that was the hypothetical that had played out. Because then, if that was the case, then we would be for this movie and saying that it should come out because Mattel's against it, Right? So it's a very fine line that these companies have to walk as well as these producers. Which begs the question, why did they have to make the movie in general? Why couldn't they make a movie talking about Barbie without it being everything to do with Barbie, right? Because the movie is definitely portraying Barbie as good in the end. Like, it's cool, it's bright, it's pink. Like, do you know how much I would pay as a straight man to walk around that set? It looked fire, dude. Like, they portray it as such a cool place. Which is why the sales of the dolls and stuff went up. I mean... It goes hand in hand. But because of the success of this, Margot's blah, 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 at the most recent CinemaCon in Las Vegas, her production company Lucky Chap announced that they are going to be producing a new movie about the board game Monopoly. Margot Robbie as the lead director, which is cool because that's what she wants to do, right? And that's awesome. But they did announce in that <laughs> the cat wants to be in the video. Say hi to Julian, everybody. But they also announced that it's an official collaboration with Hasbro and Lionsgate. So, I mean, Hasbro is going to have a say in this movie no matter what. And because part of the reason Barbie was so successful was because it talked about a big socialist problem the thing itself caused. Woman body standards. Uh, Julian really wants to be in the video. I have a theory that the Monopoly movie might talk about another problem that's really big in America. The public housing crisis. I mean, no matter what state you're in, it's almost impossible to live. It's definitely impossible to live on your own 
almost anywhere. It's impossible to live with a minimum wage job. It's almost impossible for two people to be in a relationship that both have minimum wage jobs to survive, right? Like, that's just a problem that we're facing right now. Groceries keep going up. The price of everything keeps going up. And nothing really helps no matter what. California just passed a bill with the fast food stuff. And, I mean, look how that's turning out. Not very good. So, I just think if they're making a movie about... I mean, how could you even make a movie about Monopoly? It has to be about housing, right? It's going to have to be about... I almost guarantee you that's going to be a big part of it is the housing crisis that's going on in America now. Um, I'm calling that. (laughs) And while, yes, it's cool to bring that up, I mean, what's it... I mean, it's just... It's one of those things that we can probably tell that based on the research from the Barbie movie, that Hasbro also had the thing in mind that this is going to spike their sales. Because Hasbro, I mean, a lot to them. Monopoly is my favorite board game. The past movies they've done about their stuff are not very good. So now that they got Margot Robbie behind it with the major success of Barbie, they're really banking on that, I bet. And I can only imagine what it's going to come out like. And finally, the last movie I want to talk about is this new Netflix movie with Jerry Seinfeld backed behind it and starring in it, Unfrosted, which maybe you've heard about, maybe you haven't, which is a movie about the story of Pop-Tarts. It's a little historical fiction. Um... Well, it's a lot of fiction. The idea behind it is true, but how it's played out in the movie is, like, definitely amped up to be funny, whatever. But it's between Kellogg's and Post, uh, or the movie is about Kellogg's and Post and how they're racing to invent a new breakfast item that you didn't need milk for. You could eat it on the go, hence the Pop-Tart, right? And, which is, I mean, there's no way that when this movie comes out, Pop-Tart sales are not going to go up. There's probably going to be limited edition merch. There's probably going to be... Like, who knows what? There's probably going to be Pop-Tart flavors that have the movie on it, like limited edition boxes. And you guys know me, I'm a sucker for that. But the thing is, is I'm aware. I'm a conscious consumer. And that's what I'm trying to teach people too. If some people might not be aware, they might just, I don't know. I'm really just hoping that people go into these movies aware. I know kids are going to be watching these and they're not aware. And that's why I hope, you know, they just have the right people around them to teach them. That's like... I hope they just don't fall for the traps that have been set before and before because it just seems insane to me that we're letting these huge things make movies about themselves because not only are they already loved products in their own category or hated products, I guess, they're just, now they're getting movies about them and like documentaries are one thing, right? We love a good documentary, but these are not documentaries. These are feature films in theaters that are going to be played for years and years and years, right? It's different. It's definitely different. We can agree on that. I hope. And I don't know. I just think it's crazy. I really don't know how I feel about it, right? Because none of these things are really... I mean, I love Monopoly. It's my favorite board game. But it's not like I'm passionate about Monopoly. But I am passionate about something like Mountain Dew. So if they made a movie about the origins of Mountain Dew, I mean, maybe my bias would change, right? And that's part of the conscious consumerism in America, like loyalty, brand loyalty, that they drive into your head through your whole life. I mean... It's crazy. Obviously, we've already had stuff like this with the Lego movie. I mean, Transformers. You can literally go off. There's, it's not the first time it's been happening. But it's definitely a trend happening now that I think, like I said, my theory with the Monopoly movie, it, uh, if it tackles the housing crisis... I keep kicking the table, sorry. If it tackles the housing crisis situation, then I think this trend of... I don't know how I feel about it, because companies are aware of the problem, I don't know, I don't know, I guess we'll just have to see how it comes out, um, when all of these come out, I just, yeah, I think it's just really crazy we're giving these things that already have such big revenues, more platforms, to tell their story in a way that is obviously going to intrigue kids, intrigue new consumers, intrigue people worldwide that have access to these movies, but not products, or vice versa, I mean, who knows? It's definitely going to be, it's definitely going to be interesting, to say the least. And we'll see how long the trend goes on for. Maybe these are all just fads and they'll die off pretty soon. Or who knows? Maybe they'll like keep going and going. And maybe we'll get a movie about Doritos. Or maybe we'll get a movie about Kleenex. Who you know? Who knows? <laughs> but that's just my thought. Uh, yeah, and uh, it's just something I wanted to talk about. You know, I love doing the look pack videos. I love doing all kinds of videos. And, uh, yeah, this is just part of the Gen Z journalism. I like umbrella. I like to put myself under.
Also, what do you think of this shirt, right? I feel like I'm really giving Wendigoon vibes with the hair and the button-up shirt. What do you guys think? <laughs> uh, no, but that's all I have. Thank you all so much for watching. If you did, seriously, let me know what your thoughts are on all this. I would love to hear it. And uh, I'll probably reply to most comments if you say something thought-provoking. If you're just mean, I'm not going to reply, man. No, seriously, thank you all so much for watching. I appreciate it. Uh, please go check out some other videos on my channel, like the look back videos where I talk about the history of products. And yeah, I know. I guess all this is pretty ironic because I make videos on products, right? So I guess I might just be a hypocrite in the end. And who cares? You only live once, man, and I'm just trying to have fun. <laughs> Peace.